Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Chakras and Cuss Words podcast. And today I have an exciting new guest with a very, I would say, personal and uplifting story. And it really just trumpets over succeeding um, obstacles. And that's what we are really concentrated here. Um, trying to do in season four is talk about trauma and we're kind of going to do it in a delicate manner. So um, today I have Jay India, who is the podcast host and creator of Two Inches Off the Ground. And she is here to share her story about overcoming trauma and how she's learned to actually create from it and learn a life of uh, happiness. So Jay, India, please introduce yourself. Let us know a little bit about you. First of all, Catherine, thank you so much for having me on this podcast. I'm a fan. So thank you. <laughs> I, uh, I'm honored to be on and I'm, I'm just honored to have a conversation with a light worker like yourself. So thank you so much. And I'm sorry, my phone just fell. <laughs> so, okay, there we go. There we go. A little bit better. Uh, so yes, my name is Jay India and I am the podcast host of a podcast called Two Inches Off the Ground. And the tagline is where the metaphysical meets the practical. So I try to provide metaphysical solutions to everyday practical problems so we can all be a little more enlightened and live our lives two inches off the ground. Ooh, I love that. I love that. <laughs> so I was, I was just reading something about how most people kind of have their spiritual awakening and their spiritual, almost like, um, enlightenment through the areas of the shadow, through the areas of the darkness, when they go through something that's almost like life changing, would you say that's enough? Is that kind of what happened with you, how you got started with becoming a light healer? That was definitely a part of the journey. Um, so if you don't mind, I'll, I'll tell you how my story began. Does that sound yes. good? Yes. Yes. Okay, I, good. I, All right. So I just want to give everyone a, a little bit of an activation or trigger warning. I'm going to just quickly touch on uh, the fact that I was sexually abused. So I just want to give a little bit of a warning on that because we are talking about trauma this season, right, Catherine, and burnout, yes. PTSD. Okay. So when I was four to six years old, I was abused by a caretaker, not someone in my family. And I suppressed those emotions for a really long time. I'm now 44. So I suppressed press them for almost 40 years. And the manifestation of suppressing a trauma like that, what happens is you get exactly what this season's about, PTSD and burnout. So how everything manifested was I started to, as a child, hide chocolate under my bed. And my mom and I would get in big fights about it. And I just want everyone to remember the time period. This was early 1980s. People had no clue about any signs of a bee use. They, you know, it was just a different era. It's not like it is today. So, um, I was hiding chocolate under my bed. I was eating a lot. I was an extremely thin child. So again, think back to the 1980s, everything was about how much you weigh and calories. So I was never called out on it because I wasn't overweight. Um, so I kept doing that. And as things progressed, when I was around 10 years old, I had what I would call an emotional breakdown. My dad had to come pick me up from the school psychologist in middle school because for some reason I just, I couldn't function and I had to stay home for several days. And as I progressed into a teenager, I was anxious all the time. I was depressed. Uh, I didn't know how to even handle happiness, even joyful situations. I just wanted to be left alone. I just wanted to be left in my room, reading a book, uh, you know, away from the world. And that's how I was handling it. Then I move into young adulthood and I get diagnosed in 2004, my early to mid twenties with something called, and Catherine, I have a feeling, you know, it cause you're a nurse and it's called interstitial cystitis and it's a bladder disorder. It's extremely painful for anyone who's ever had. It's one of the most painful things on earth. Your bladder lining is basically ripped away. And in 2004, they didn't, I had to go to so many doctors because no one knew what it was back then. Now everyone knows what it is. Millions of people have it. So if you think in terms of the chakras, 
think about where that chakra is, right? That's the sacral chakra near the bladder. And the sacral chakra is responsibility is the sacral chakra is responsible for your sexuality and your creativity. So now moving on with my life about a year, year and a half ago, so I'm around 43 years old. I've, I've kept all these memories suppressed. Okay. So I've kept everything suppressed. Haven't told anyone what's happened to me because when you think about it, a four to six year old doesn't even understand what happened right? They they don't even understand. So these memories start coming out. Why do they start coming out? Because usually around age 35 to 45, what happens is we start dealing with ourselves emotionally. So does that means is Catherine, you know, you're shaking your head. You're, you either start going to a therapist, a professional. I went to an energy trauma healer and things started coming out and the memories start coming out. And I realized what had happened to me. And because of that, I ended up, you know, I ended up having uh, stomach issues and intestine issues, and I didn't know what it was. And I've had it for years, but I just, it, it got to the point of just horrendous where last um, August, September, 2021, I almost died. Oh, no. I uh, stopped. Yeah. I stopped eating. I couldn't even look at water. I tell people that I have a body type, like a serotonin. Jessica Parker or a Natalie Portman. I'm super tiny. I'm only Mm -hmm. five foot one. I lost 20 pounds in two weeks. So if you think of those body types, you can't afford that. No. Um, I, I was a horrendous weight. I want, I'm too embarrassed to even say say what I weighed. And, um, I was having up to 50 colon spasms a day. Wow. Now I've never given birth, but I imagine it's just as horrendous as, uh, (laughs) as labor. I don't, I don't, Oh no, but, um, it's called a flare what I had. And it was, it takes 20, 10 to 20 years to get to this point of a flare. And I don't think it's coincidence that all of a sudden, all these emotional things start coming out. The memories start coming forward. The trauma starts coming forward. All my suppressed emotions start unearthing. And all of a sudden I'm going through this flare, not a coincidence. So long story short, I ended up getting help. I got all the tests I needed and I was diagnosed with an autoimmune disorder called ulcerative or ulcerative colitis. Mm, okay. And um, if you look up ulcerative colitis, it is 60% emotional. Mm-hmm. So when you think about storing trauma and suppressing trauma, there you go. Right. Yeah. And um, I want to touch on this a little bit because I think a lot of people like we hear, trust your gut or, um, trust, you know, your heart or trust your intuitions, or they have a nervous stomach. They have this, um, like anxiety type, um, I guess you could say GI issues. And I do think that a lot of it is related to trauma and also anxiety. Um, my son for, uh, I haven't really talked about it on the podcast that much, but my son was diagnosed with Crohn's disease. And while that is, you know, similar in some ways to ulcer colitis, it's also a a little bit different, but, um, a lot of times when he would have his stomach issues and he was having issues for a very long time that it would turn into anxiety and it would turn into more, of a emotional type of disease versus a disease where it was solely on just the GI issues. And that's been, you know, something that the family has been trying to, you know, sort out and, you know, get him through it as much as possible. But, um, for most people, sometimes when we start to like harvest these, um, medical diagnoses and these complications, it makes, it makes, us really start to tap into what's going on in the soul level and what's going on in the personal level versus just the physiological. So I like that you really brought that up. And when you started with your journey of, um, now you're diagnosed and now you are seeing a counselor when that all started to kind of come into play, like, okay, I was a victim of abuse. How did you like acknowledge that? Because most of the time we tend to put it away, you know, we put it on our shelf and don't go back to it. 
Well, first of all, I want to say I'm I'm sorry about your son, and I offline I'm going to give you a link of a, um, an expert that has changed my life and has oh, awesome. really helped me herbally. Okay. Um, so and also does Crohn's. So I will give you that uh, after the podcast. Thank but you. <laughs> great, <laughs> but great question because, and this is something I really wanted to bring up today, Catherine. So I know you're so intuitive that you knew, say this source said to you, say this, cause you need to bring it up. And what I want to say is that keep in mind, this happened to me four to six years old. I'm going into a trauma energy healer, which is like a therapist. So what the trauma energy healer does, it's like talk therapy, but with energy healing as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so I go into this person, talk to this person. I haven't told a soul about what happened to me. Mm -hmm. And when I finally, as she said, was able to tell a responsible adult, mm -hmm. that released a lot of the energy for me that really did. And then once I was able to do that, I realized that I can't keep in hiding with this anymore. So I talk about it a little bit on my podcast and I'll go onto other podcasts like yours and, and, you know, talk about it to see if that helps other people, because I really feel that's part of my light work. Mm -hmm. So that was a big thing for me is, is not hiding. And with my autoimmune disorder, I have the same approach. I don't hide from it. I tell people about it. I'm honest about it. It's not the most sexy thing. It's, it's you know, it, it's fucking right. ugly is what it is. Right. I see, I can swear on this podcast. It's fucking right. ugly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so um, in saying all that, it, I, I'm honest with people. So let's say Catherine, you and I had an event two months from now. I would be honest with you. And I say, listen, I went through this flare six months ago. And, uh, it, I can't predict when it's going to happen again. And if it does, right. I just want you to know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and that's the thing with the GI, the GI, I guess you could say, uh, diseases or the GI complications is, <laughs> you know, my son has stories. <laughs> He's got some funny stories and <laughs> I go, wow. You know, and there's been times where he's, you know, he's obviously had to be very honest with his girlfriend and she knew the whole thing because he's like, no, you don't understand when I got to, when I got to go, I got to go. Like oh, we got to yeah. go. Gotta go. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so if you love me, girl, you go get me to that location. You know, <laughs> <laughs> And that's how it is. And you know, yeah. when you're feeling that in that gut and we're talking right. around chakras again, we're talking around the solar plexus area, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's responsible for your manipura, your personal power. And a, a lot of people, when they go through panic attacks or anxiety, they feel like they're going to have a heart attack or they feel like they're going to faint. People right. like me, like your son, we feel like we're going to lose our biological functions. Right. Right. So Definitely. it's just, a, it's just a different form. So I watch that now and I see when I'm stressed or anxious, is it setting in my stomach? And I really mm -hmm. observe that. Mm -hmm. And for people who, um, cause that's an, another reason why I was like, I have to have her on the show because she's centered around the GI. Um, and bringing that up because a lot of people, I think also, like I've been on this huge thing where I've been like making juice blends that are centered around certain chakras and just, um, trying to bring in what is for that energy and what feeds that energy. How have you changed? Have you like changed your eating habits? Have you been eating more towards, um, a more, I guess you could say cleaner or healthier alignment with your body related to the, your um, chakras or has it been uh, not that much of a difference? <laughs> no, huge, <laughs> huge yeah. difference, huge difference. And I love the idea of juicing to do that. That's mm -hmm. so smart. And again, I love how you brought it back to the chakras because again, now we're thinking of my intestines, right? Remember in 2004, I was diagnosed with interstitial cystitis. That's in the sacral chakra again. That is responsible for creativity, sexual power. And then it's also, you know, the, the base of the tailbone, which is the root chakra, which is responsible for safety and security. So I'm having issues with all these three chakras. And that's why mm -hmm. I think it's so important you're doing this juicing. It's so smart. And so, so for me, I attack this. Is that a, the better word? I heal this. See, that's yes. more spiritual to say. <laughs> 
coming in, she's coming in, <laughs> yeah. blazing. Right. I am. Um, I, 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 yeah, I'm on today. So I heal this mind, body, soul, mm-hmm. and through the physical to answer your question, what really works for me is eating a diversity of foods and changing it up every day. So let's say, I'm just going to say, let's say I had pizza yesterday, which actually I did have pizza yesterday. Mm -hmm. So let's say I had pizza yesterday and I have, I ordered a whole pie and I have it leftover so I can have it for the next three days. That does not work for me. That's when I start to get in trouble. I have to constantly diversify my food and diversify my gut. I've also done muscle testing with food. So I realize, you know, what food doesn't work for me. And I follow this expert, um, called Jenny, her name's Jenny Patel. I'm just going to say her name and you can go to listen to your gut.com, which I'm going to give to you. And, uh, she's great because I use her shakes. They're called absorb shakes and I should be making money off of this, but I'm not, <laughs> right. but, like, um, yeah. but I just yeah. want to get the information out to people yeah. and they have tons of vitamins and everything that my gut needs and that I'm lacking. And I also do a strict, uh, vegemin, the vegemin, veg, I just, Put two words. Right. It's okay. I do I is it veg, veg, vegetable and regimen. I do. I do. <laughs> I, I a make vitamin my own herbal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like that though. My own, I do. My own words. Yeah. <laughs> I do a, a, a vitamin herbal. Yeah. Um, regimen as well. I also do that. Also a big part of it body wise. And Catherine, I I listened to one of your amazing episodes where you talked about losing weight and I know you're very conscious of exercise. So I also do a lot of exercise. I especially love my rebounder, which is a small trampoline that gets the lymph system going and, uh, (laughs) <laughs> gets the lymph system going and gets the toxins out. I do dry brushing before I take a shower to get all the toxins out. So I try to do all these things and soul wise and mind wise. I know some people don't want to hear it, but I do a lot of meditation when I can not perfect. Can't do it right. every day. Yeah. I turn on 528 Hertz music, which is the healing oh. vibration. Mm-hmm. And, uh, that really has helped me. That has helped me turn a corner. And I also want to say, Catherine, to your listeners that when I was in the thick of it, when I was having 50 colon spasms a day, and I couldn't even look at water and I had to crawl out of my bed to go to the bathroom, it was that bad. How did I make sure that I kept myself in a place where I could raise myself to a higher vibration. Cause that's what I realized. I was in this lower vibration where I wasn't healing. So I needed to raise myself to a higher vibration. And what I did was I accessed my spirit council, which are composed of my spirit guides, my angels. And they gave me an amazing new guide. I thought it was going to be all of us together, holding hands going, Oh, and doing this whole healing thing. It wasn't, they gave me this spirit guide named Tony who would crack jokes at me when I would have a spasm, when I would have a really painful spasm. And it, it made me laugh and it made me smile. And it brought me out of that vibration. And that guide stayed with me by my side for two weeks. And then I had another native American guide that was sent to me that helped me. So just ask your spirit guides. I say spirit council for help when you're in those, you know, the throes, the thick of it. So that is amazing that you actually were able to change your full lifestyle with, you know, like almost like an enlightenment related to the chakras and then related to bringing that light for healing, even though you're kind of like a little warrior and you're like, why do you like take pulls out? Like I'm going to attack it. it. (laughs) That's a Jersey in me. I'm going to attack. Right. That's that is. (laughs) I love having you West coast people on because you're like, I don't know fucking attack this shit. Like, yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to be sitting in the center for no much. For, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I love it. I love it. So when you finally, you know, start to get more aligned with your light, with your healing process, with everything that's coming this way, how did you take this energy and actually use it to help others and use to heal others? Because that's a huge thing as well as becoming a healer. And I, you know, how did you do a full transformation where you're no longer the student, but you're now the one, the guide. 
I feel like I'm always perpetually the student. I have to say that because I, I think, you know, Catherine, well, you definitely know if you're an emergency room nurse. Um, and by the way, my mom was an emergency room nurse. I just oh, love it. love it. So shout out respect for emergency. Cause that is no joke job. You guys have some great cocktail party fucking stories on that one. That's amazing. But anyway, I digress. So, um, for me, I've, just been learning that healing is not linear. It's cyclical. And even though right now I'm in a good place and I feel good where I am, there may be something that arises six months from now, a year from now, where I just need to realize that, you know what, maybe uh, there's still some things unearthing for me and I still need to deal with them. And I still need to deal with this trauma. And I think I'm going to be healing from this probably until I leave the earth. So that's the way I look at it as for becoming a healer. I feel like my podcast, I try, I try to heal or help heal the collective, assist in healing the collective. And I feel I do that through my words and hopefully my energy. And I feel like I was put on this earth for storytelling and that's the way I heal. So when I do my episodes, I hope that the information I put out resonates with people. And if it does, that's great. If people, you know, aren't ready for it or it's not their cup of tea, that's fine too. But that is my goal to just put the information out and let people disseminate it. Because at the end of the day, I am, I guess I'm an expert in the sense of my experiences, but I don't consider myself an expert expert. I just try to give information and see how it lands. Definitely. And um, when you got on your journey of the healing, do you feel like creating the podcast has really helped you almost kind of bring that enlightenment to others and share your story? Because I think the more like we talk about it and to the listeners who are hearing some growling <laughs> tanks in the room. Right? Oh, Tank is his name. Oh, he's a cutie. Yeah. I, I saw him on video. Yeah, he's, he's, a cutie. he's a little stinker, but um. <laughs> Do you feel like the more you actually talk about it, it's helped you with that and starting, starting your movement and having that area to move forward? Yeah, it's been very cathartic for me. I will say that because I'm able to have a voice. I'm able to get it out. I was working in a career for five and a half years where I didn't have a voice at all. And I was having problems with my throat chakra. I was having problems with my sinuses, all sorts of things. And now all of that went away now that I have a voice. And I feel like I'm able to help people by telling my story and sharing everything. And uh, one thing I just want to share with your listeners that I had written down, and I just want to make a point of it, if that's okay, Catherine, is one, you know, everything happens as it should in the metaphysical world, as we know. However, <laughs> uh, one mistake, I, I say that in air quotes, but one mistake that I just want to warn my listeners of is how we were just joking about, and I say, I'm going to attack this. Well, here's the problem is when you start doing all these healing modalities at once, and I'm doing all the chakra dancing, and I'm doing the trauma energy healer, and I'm going to energy healings, and I'm doing, you get the point, I'm doing seven different things, acupuncture, blah, blah, blah. It all came flooding out at once. And I felt that the one thing I could have done better was be more gentle in the process and be more patient in the process. So all of this would have unfolded and unearthed, let's say over a period, I'm just guessing of two years instead of, you know, two weeks, because <laughs> that's what ended up happening. And I think that's what caused the ulcerative colitis flare was because it all was coming out at once. So that's my only recommendation to your listeners. If you're listening to this and this really resonates with you and you have a trauma to, you know, unearth, think about obviously going to a professional, the whole nine, but also think about, you know, you don't have to attack it all at once. Like I did, even though we were making a joke about it, it may not benefit you. It may benefit you to go slower. Yes. And definitely like take your time and be kind with yourself. Like I think a lot of us, when we are in that area, it's like, I just want to heal. I just want to get over this. I just want to move forward. I just want to, you know, take a different approach. And sometimes sitting with our true emotions is like the best approach for us, even though it mm. hurts the worst and it 
you know, it's, it's not, it's not a fun time, you know? Um, but I really loved everything you shared so much. Can you, can you tell me three tips that you would give somebody who's starting their journey of healing and, um, seeking past the trauma and seeking to move forward past it all? So I would say definitely number one, enlist the help of your guides, your angels or source or truck, excuse me, or talk directly to source. Something I do now is that to remove some blockages I have, because I feel like worthiness was taken away from me with that trauma. So I'm trying to get my worthiness back. I've been dropping into my heart. And that means the focus goes from your head because we're always all in our head. We drop into our hearts. You'll feel your heart expanding. You'll heal. You'll feel a dull ache. And you just, once your heart is expanding and your heart chakra is open, talk to source, ask source questions, whatever you need source. Tell me how to start this healing journey. Tell me how I should heal. Tell me what to do. And you will get the answers and it can either come for me. It comes when I'm driving. So it could be that way. Um, be safe on the road, kids be safe on the road, but it could <laughs> come while you're driving or it could be, you know, pen and paper and it's automatic writing. So that's my number one thing is talk to source. Number two, you know, this is going to be very generic. Talk to a professional, please do, because I, I think that cannot be overlooked, especially if you're going through a major, major trauma. And number three is because I wanted to bring this up as well, because I know your season is on PST, PS. What is wrong with me? PTSD. Yeah, PTSD, <laughs> and maybe and trauma, and PTSD, and, and burnout. Yeah. yeah. And with the burnout factor, another part of my story is that I would always rush to get through life. So even in the happy moments when I was anxious and depressed as a child, as a teenager, I would constantly rush things. Like, let's say I was at my friend's house. I would be like, oh my God, I just want to be home in, in my bed, reading a book, watching TV, doing whatever. I could never enjoy the moment. When I was in school, I was the first one to always hand in the assignments and in class because I just wanted to rush through it so I could just read a book. And I figured out because I asked a therapist why I was doing this and therapist was like, I don't know. So I figured it out on my own. And I realized that it was just burnout from all the suppressed emotions, all the trauma. I just wanted to relax. So if you feel yourself doing that, then that may be a sign that you need help and you need to explore some different things. Oh, that is absolutely perfect. Well, thank you so much for being on the show and thank you. Thank you. Please let everybody know how they can get a hold of you and find you. So you can just find me on Instagram at two inches off the ground and you can listen to my podcast everywhere, two inches off the ground. And Catherine, you are a light, as I said before, and you're amazing. And I so enjoyed this conversation. I really enjoyed Tank too, your dog. <laughs> <laughs> and I appreciate you like, so much. He's over here chewing his ball. I'm like, oh gosh, that's all. And I appreciated that I got to swear. I got to drop some f bombs. Oh yeah, so. definitely. It's Thank you so much. For a reason. <laughs> so I'm honored. Thank you. Yeah. Gratitude. Well, I just want to thank everybody for listening. Please comment, like, subscribe, and give this podcast a share. And everybody have an amazing day. Bye.